what are your impressions of Santa Rosa Junior College so far? I am. Uh, it's beyond words, really. It's. Uh, I, I think. Uh, uh, beside the uh, having a brother here from another mother, Doctor Holcomb. <laughs> <laughs> I I have been really impressed. It look it looks like a Harvard University, uh, in Cambridge. You look at the facilities. You look at how you know beautiful this place is, and you look at the kindness of uh, you know the professors and uh, the students. I was in um, in class today. Uh, uh, Umoja group. Yeah. Yeah. You know I have been to quite a number of. Uh, colleges and uh, universities but the warmth the humility and the kindness really I saw here it's just so special and I really I, you know I mentioned this to quite a number of people but I really really want to reiterate you are extremely lucky to be here I met with the president who turns out to be uh, in a neighbor in New York. <laughs> he was in a Chinatown and <laughs> who knows, uh, you know, there's a chance that we crossed uh, each other a number of times. Um, uh, I, I am in, um, in Soho on Broome Street and he, he was born and raised just uh, a few blocks away where I always go to buy uh, food and we have all these connections. So, it's, it's beside the point that, uh, you know, what a humble human being, what a, what a great person to really be in this great community. Uh, so, uh, thank you so much for having me here. And it's, it's really, truly, truly an honor to be, to be, to be here with you and uh, share my, some of my story and hear uh, from uh, s uh, some of the people I already talked to in the class and uh, after you know the questions just uh, brilliant you can see that people are really thinking beyond themselves and really not afraid to share personal challenges which are our challenges and so that's not something that you really get from any any academic institution you get it from uh, you know a special place like uh, <coughs> like where you are, where, you know, the philosophy, the mission is to make everyone on the campus feel so comfortable and to see your professors, faculty members and others, the peers, as, uh, you know, friends, as a family. So I feel myself at home. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> Simon, do you want to ask your well, question? Yeah, so in a, in a bigger perspective today, the United States has a president who wants to refuse refugees for the coming into the United States. And with regards to your background, what are your thoughts about that and uh, how the situation is today in the United States? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a good question and it's a sad situation. I, first of all, I fear sorry for him, frankly. And uh, second of all, I I think that uh, he's lost, really. And the reason why I'm saying this, we are in the 21st century. And we know enough to know that the world is not about a bunch of countries with the borders that were made by people. I mean, look at Santa Rosa. Is that an English word? Spanish. Spanish. Right. right. In a California, San Francisco, this, what happened? How, how, how did these uh, cities or mountains and, you know, get the names they do have? It's interactions, yes, with the Spanish and others. And how do you dare to say you are going to build a war? dividing people when actually we can fly you can I always wonder what birds think of us yeah. <laughs> you know right. what do they think of us when we are, we are trying to you know hide build prison you know prisons for ourselves when they are flying over the places 
what do you tell a disease like all these bacteria or viruses, Ebola or HIV, AIDS and things like that? Do they have boundaries? You know, where do they come from? How, where do they start and how, how come that no matter what you do, you actually, you know, we suffer from the same problems and the, how do we enjoy the good news that, you know, come from different places as a part of humanity? So, I, I frankly think, you know, going to your question, somehow I wake up thinking, is that nightmare or the social committee? Is that for real? You know, even Burundians, I mean, imagine in Burundi, a country that went through so much. They are thinking, what the heck is going on in the United States of America? It seems like it's, it, it can be acceptable in a place where the, you know, the abnormal has become the norm. And when things like that, you know, degrading women, degrading people from different, you know, cultures in a country of immigrant, in a country where even his wife is not a native of this country, but came from somewhere, and you have the gut to actually say, you don't belong here. You know, the solution to save America, which is a country of immigrants, in the country where, you know, these immigrants are people, most of them refugees, who actually are so lucky to have the opportunity to meet other people and learn, go to school, and see how this nation has been built, and are dying to do something good, not to destroy. It's terrible, really. And it makes, you know, yeah, but it should, you know, but this country is, is great enough to know that the Constitution is respected, the laws are here, and one man is not going to just uh, take it, you know, drag it the way in the many African countries people do things, uh, you know, those who are in power. So he's not going to change the Constitution. It's the Constitution of the people and by the people. And that is how lucky the American people are and the world really is, because at least you have all these judges and others who are saying, Hey, Mr. President, just in, in case you thought this is what we're going to do, no, you can't, you can't just do it. Uh, so it's scary and it's heartbreaking, but I do know that uh, maybe this country is, going to, is not going to suffer the way the, you know, people outside are going to suffer, because really every time there's a problem within different countries, people, you know, look at these refugees, when they are running, coming back, coming to the United States or call, you know, crying for help. Hey, Americans, it's because they have respect for this nation. It's because they have uh, admiration for this, uh, you know, this nation. And when someone is saying, no, you are out of here, don't come here, or, you know, those who are here, you, you, you are out of here, it really leaves such a horrible taste in your mouth. The good news is that the media that he keeps blaming is alive and uh, you know you guys you, you are out on the street and they say hell no i was flying coming from uh, from burundi when i was in europe you know there were you know as you are waiting there are all these people who are talking about nothing is but trump not americans and talking about the judge in seattle and they were just you know yes the u.s is uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's now confused, but you can see that people are not confused. It's one man who's confused. And that is a, such a wonderful thing to hear, mm. that they have not lost, you know, hope and, um, and the trust in you, in us, you know. And that is something to be proud of and to keep. And in a way, I, you know, I think it's... You know, there's the bad, but there's the good, because, uh, you know, who knew? I mean, wh where else do, do, you know, countries or people have this uh, power to say, the president, you don't have the rights to, to destroy my rights or to change the constitution or ch change the law. It doesn't happen almost anywhere else but here. So it's sad to see this kind of stuff, but... I do know that the American people 
who create this country have the pride and the the power to actually tell the, the, the a president like a Trump it's a, a country it's a government by the people and for the people it's a country that is uh, people who go to a place like Burundi to do volunteer work who are thinking beyond what they are and that is not something that one person can change from your heart from your mind because you know your values you call values that you inherited from our ancestors and people who built this country, this nation. This. Look at this college where you are. And we depend on each other. If we lock ourselves in, who do we become, really? You know? It's a joy when you are helping someone else. It's a joy when, and an honor when you open a door for someone who is desperate. And that is what makes us different and special. But if you lock the door and don't come here, don't do this and that, who are you? So. Awesome. I, I, ask I just, uh, my main thing is, like, how do you, like, as journalists, I love to spread, like, kind of the idea of these really no, more noble ideas. And I, I think about how on your website it said that you have an uh, unwavering conviction that humanity's progress should be measured by how we honor the dignity of others. And I just, I really like that quote, but I just feel like, how do I apply that to a practical sense in my own life? How do you practice that yeah. in your own life? And share it. And share it. Well, <clears throat> think about, think about, Let's, let's really go back to Trump as an example. Yeah. Do you really think that he's a happy hum human being? Mm. You know? He has everything available to care and to honor human dignity. But he's not. And look at how angry he is. And you know what anger does? It's a self-hatred. It's a sign. It's a, it's a sign. If you're going to diagnose someone, a patient, you look at that anger, you wonder where that anger is coming from, given how much wealth he has accumulated and how much wealth someone is doing something. I mean, he didn't make any table that is uh, in his uh, you know, living room. Someone had to make it. Someone had to plant a tree to be cut and someone to cut it. So you go back and you realize that we all are depending on one another without even really knowing it. So if you think about this table, for example, how did, think about who, how did it get here? It was not made here in this room. Someone brought it and uh, brought it from where? From somewhere where it was being made. Who made it? And, and you know, who brought all these you know, pieces together? So you just go back and you realize that we are really one humanity. And if one person is unable to do something, you are going to suffer. So it's a teamwork, you know? It's, it's, it's a teamwork, so who, who we are. So honor human dignity is not, nothing really beyond what you yourself want for yourself and for your family for someone you love. Just what you want is what everyone else wants. And so if we can actually say, okay, yeah, you are hungry, and I know there's food, mm -hmm. instead of letting you starve, I go somewhere and I get food, you smile. Right. And I know how painful it is. And that really act of kindness, I actually benefited more than you benefit from it because it creates joy in my heart. It makes me feel I'm alive and I did something wonderful.